Welcome everyone, this is David, and today in this video we're going to be talking about the person of Joseph Atkonsevich, what he did in his persecutions against the Orthodox Christians, and why Marco Rubio is asking for his intercessions. Marco Rubio, who is a Roman Catholic American politician, most famous for his meltdown in the 2016 debate, uh, in relation to the war in Ukraine, has asked for the intercessions of Joseph Atkonsevich, who is related to the region of Ukraine, right? Now, why does he ask for his intercessions? Before I kind of give my full analysis of that, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think what Mark Ruby is expressing is that he's expressing the fundamentally anti-Orthodox sentiments of American foreign policy. And this will become very clear once we understand who Joseph Atkonsevich is. He was a Polish-Lithuanian monk and an Archbishop of the Uniate Church, and he was killed by an Orthodox mob, uh, and as a result, according to the Roman Catholic Church, he's considered as a martyr for that. And the question that this video is going to be tackling ultimately is, is Joseph really a martyr? Or was there a justifiable reason for why people can? Why did, why did he get attacked out of nowhere, right? What, what caused it? But before we fully understand the relationships between the Orthodox and the Roman Catholics at that time, we need to go back 30 years prior to his death, the Council of Brest which was supposed to be a union council between the Orthodox and the Roman Catholics. And this is what, where the word unia comes from. And these refer to those who were, you know, Orthodox, these Orthodox jurisdictions who united with Rome. And the aftermath of that council was that, generally speaking, it caused an even deeper rift between the Orthodox Christians and the Roman Catholics. In fact, the council after, you know, first of all, the council before and during the council treated Orthodox Christians as second class citizens. But moreover, after the council, they declared that, and this was, this council was ratified by the Polish king. They declared that the Orthodox uh, were, were to be rebuked, that their bishops were in disobedience and betrayed their church that the Greek exarchs were spies for the Turkish sultans, or Orthodox Christians apparently are spies for the Turks now, and that all the Orthodox faithful were criminals against their ecclesiastical authorities and the will of their king. That is, you know, referring to the Polish, you know, Lithuanian Commonwealth. So now, due to this council, the Orthodox Christians were considered to be criminals under the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And one of the examples of the persecution, really persecution started especially after the council, because the council was kind of the justification for it. One of the things that Joseph Konsevich did was that he did not allow Orthodox Christians to bury their dead in consecrated ground. This is from Norman Davis's book, God's Playground. And uh, there are other atrocities that he has committed against the Orthodox, severe atrocities, in fact. We're talking about murders here. We're talking about burning monasteries. We're talking about arresting Orthodox priests for holding liturgies. The, this in particular, you can see in Ivan Kachanovsky's History of the Dictionary of Ukraine. He celebrated a Thanksgiving Mass near an Orthodox monastery that he himself allowed to be burned with the Orthodox Christian faithful in it. And so he celebrated the burning of an Orthodox monastery. This you can see in Peri Piolkina's book, Ecumenism, A Path to Perdition. And, and in, in the Kilisha, you know, because people, you know, Roman Catholics will see this and they will say, oh, you know, these, you're just making this up. The kill shot of this video is going to be Lev Sapieha's letter to Joseph Atkonsevich, where he says that Joseph Atkonsevich was is responsible for murdering Orthodox Christians, for killing them and arresting them, and that he's such a barbarian that even him, Lev Sapia, a Grand Chancellor of the of you know the King of Poland, who is fully supportive of the Unia, even he denounces Joseph. And this letter is uh, the context of this letter is that Joseph is complaining about being persecuted by the Orthodox. That's how he claims. And this is a response to Josephat from Lev Sapier. So Lev Sapier is a, was at this time a Grand Chancellor. When he was born, he was actually an Orthodox Christian. But then he apostatized to Calvinism, Unitarianism, and these, these weirdo sects. And he came out of those sects as a Roman Catholic. And he, and he was a supporter of the Union. He was a supporter of the Council of Brest. He was one of the people in the government actually enforcing the decisions of the council, and even he was disgusted by Joseph. And I will read you the full letter here. There is also a different translation of this letter that you might check. This one in particular is from Valerian Krasinski's book, but I'm going to be reading from this part, translation because I think it's, it's much clearer. Um, 
he says, I admit that I too was concerned about the cause of the Unia and that it will be imprudent to abandon it, but it had never occurred to me that your eminence will implement it using such violent measures. You say that you are free to drown the infidels. So he himself is saying, you know, you say. So Joseph himself admits that he was drowning the infidels, meaning the Orthodox who rejected the Unia, that he was chopping their heads off, etc. And he says, no. You're not allowed to do that. The Lord's commandment expresses a strict prohibition to all, which concerns you also. When you violated human consciences, closed churches so that people should perish like infidels without divine services, without Christian rites and sacraments, when you abused the king's favors and privileges, you managed without us. So these things were done, you know, you did these things alone. But when there is a need to suppress seditions caused by your excesses, you want us to cover up for you. As to the dangers that threaten your life, one may say that everyone is the cause of his own misfortune. Stop making trouble, do not subject us to the general hatred of the people, and you yourself to obvious danger and general criticism. Everywhere one hears people grumbling that you do not have any worthy priests, but only blind ones. Your ignorant priests are the brain of the people, but tell me, your eminence, whom did you win over? Whom did you attract to your severity? It will turn out that in Polotsk itself you have lost even those who, until now, were obedient to you. You have turned sheep into goats, you have plunged the state into danger, and maybe all of us Catholics into ruin. It has been rumored that they, meaning the Orthodox, will rather be under the infidel Turk than endure such violence. You yourself are the cause of their rebellion. Instead of joy, your notorious union has brought us only troubles and discords and has become so loathsome that we will rather be without it. Again, if you want to read a different translation to see you know, what he's saying, uh, you can pause this video and read for yourself. I'm not going to read the other translation as well. But it's very clear what kind of a person Joseph Akonsevich was, especially in light of this letter from Lev Sapir, another Roman Catholic. Even Roman Catholics were separating themselves from Joseph because of how much of an animal he was. He was murdering Orthodox Christians for, Orthodox Christ for being Orthodox Christians. And he was closing their churches and burning their churches too. Which, given Roman Catholic sacramentology, especially today, you know, a lot of Roman Catholics who... Uh, venerate this person also then say well come let's unite let's you know you guys shall accept this person who killed you guys too by the way which is of course a very awkward situation if that were to pass but obviously it's never going to pass and it given ortho, uh, Roman Catholic sacramentology who you know he technically speaking Joseph was burning churches that had sacraments too sacraments were being served in the churches that he was closing and, you know, being burned, it is only that, you know, because of the false faith, according to Roman Catholic logic, because we have a false faith, or sacraments were salvific, but they were still sacraments, so he was also attacking the sacraments of the church, really technically, especially in, in today's sacramentology of the Roman Catholic Church, he was kind of attacking his own church by that logic, but of course there is no logic in Roman Catholicism, and I want to finalize this video by stating that why I think that Marco Rubio knows exactly what he is doing to kind of, you know, remember the malfunctioning speech with relation to Obama from Marco Rubio. Uh, when we go back again, 30 years prior, we can remember the bombing of Yugoslavia from the United States. And this happened, you know, they, they, this happened, these bombings took place during Pascha and they even painted happy Easter on some of the bombs they dropped. And so the point that I'm making here is that Marco Rubio is merely continuing the anti-Orthodox viewpoint of the of the United States, whether it is by the way, it's not ex, you know it's not exclusively Roman Catholic, you know, but it's a general the general establishment of the of the United States and its po politicians have a very strong anti-Orthodox sentiment, and so there is not only a geopolitical significance uh, in his request when he is asking for Joseph's intercessions, but a spiritual meaning behind it too. That is, he is for the destruction of Ukraine's true identity of Orthodox Christianity, and he wants to turn it into an Americanist crap hole. And he also wants to perpetuate, again, the, both the spiritual and the geopolitical destruction and paralyzation of the Russian nation. And I think that is the real intention of Mark Rubio and many of the American political establishment members i suppose and that's what i want to end my video with thank you for watching this i will see all of you in the next video and 
I want to finalize this video by giving a shout out to everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon. Thank you to Mitch, Jonathan, Stephen, Vlad, Kerry, Ignatius, Jack, Nectarius, Flood Basement, Dave, Colton, Seraphim, and Norbert. Thank you all for supporting this channel. And I will see all of you in the stream tomorrow and in the other videos to come. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all. May God be with you all. Goodbye.